Now, auto upgrade, advanced options. What else is there? What can you do with auto upgrade? How powerful is it? And let me start with a very simple thing here. With one config file, you can cover as many databases as you want. And what we use here is, in the first example, you see only one database, and you see the prefix, in this case, UPG1. And I can differ between different databases with different prefixes. So in the second file here, we cover more databases and we use different prefixes. You don't have to go with UPG1. You can use whatever you want. Mike, Hugo, Daniel, Fred, whatever uh, is convenient for you, works for you. It could be also the database name. Whatever you want, you're free here. But you can cover hundreds and thousands of databases with one config file. Next option, you can also run the upgrade with the same config file on different servers. If you want to have one central upgrade config file for auto upgrade, you have this parameter upgrade node. And that means only if the node name matches what you described in upgrade node, that database will upgrade it. So when I execute here, the auto upgrade with that config file on prod underscore server 01, then the database covered with the prefix upg1 won't be upgraded. It won't be even attempted to upgrade because the upgrade node doesn't match the actual node name of the server. But please be careful when specify the upgrade node. Normally, you would say localhost, or you just don't use the parameter. It's not needed. And then you avoid a pitfall here if you run auto upgrade locally and have an upgrade config file for each server separately. Then I think this is one, one, one of my favorite features because I use this by myself all the time, tweaking SP file parameters. So I can pass parameters onto auto upgrade. I can advise auto upgrade to set certain parameters either during the upgrade or after the upgrade. So for instance, Daniel will show you later an example where you can have processes parameters set higher in a multi-tenant environment. I set always a standard set of parameters when I upgrade databases to 19C. And some of the examples I mentioned here below, for instance, the most famous underscore cursor obsolete threshold, which needs to be set to 1024, different from the default or turning off SQL plan directives, which get created still in the background with underscore SQL plan directive management control zero. So I have passed this on with at after upgrade p file. I can do this for single databases. So you see the prefix upg1 or upg2 used, but you can do this for all your databases with one parameter line, and then you use the prefix global. So when I use this file here with global add after upgrade p file, and I pass on this simple text file, then all my databases will get these parameters after the upgrade is completed. But you can also use del during upgrade or add during upgrade, for instance, for higher processes setting or delete after upgrade. So all that is possible, extremely powerful. I like this a lot, and it helps you also to create a standard set of parameters and get rid of all these wild creations of historical nostalgic parameter collections. What I like also a lot is the shell script execution in auto upgrade. So you, what you could do is you could use before or after action. One of the first requests we received from a customer was, I need a script which shuts down my middleware stack on that server before upgrade and starts it up afterwards. So before action, you pass on a shell script. And of course, this shell script can call another shell script and it can call another shell script. And that shell script can use a SQL script and call another SQL script. So you can stack. You can use it global or again on a per database basis. And we passed on also this option. You see it here with a um, red marked the Y. This means if the return code of the shell script executable is positive, yes, then we will go on. 
If that fails, how the upgrade will stop. This is to make sure, let's say I want to stop my application server stack and that fails. I certainly don't want the upgrade to proceed here. So if the return code is false, then it will stop here and the database won't be upgraded. You have permitted executions for shell scripts on Unix. On Windows, you have more variety. You can use batch, command, or PowerShell. Then we have guaranteed restore points. By default, auto upgrade writes a guaranteed restore point unless it's a standard edition two database. Then we give you a warning in the analyze phase and tell you, hey, take care. You need to make sure that you have a proper backup, which can be restored as well. The other option is restoration no. This is useful, first of all, when you just test. I use it quite often or in case your database is in no archive log mode. Whether this is in purpose or just by accident, but if you have a database in no archive log mode and you don't set restoration no, then auto upgrade won't attempt to upgrade your database because it can't set a guaranteed restore point. By default, the guaranteed restore point will be kept. So when you upgrade, afterwards, auto upgrade tells you the name of the guaranteed restore point and you have to remove it manually. Now, I had customers asking, say, Mike, I tested the upgrade 20 times and I do the production upgrade in a night from Saturday to Sunday next week, but I don't want to log into the system on Sunday morning, 2 a.m. when the upgrade is completed just to remove the guaranteed restore point. And I don't want to have it sitting there until Monday morning. How can I remove it automatically once the upgrade is successful? This is the trigger here. Is the upgrade successful? And you use the second red mark parameter here, drop GRP of the upgrade, yes. Then once the upgrade is completed successfully, auto upgrade will remove the guaranteed restore point. And I had another question from a customer who said, Mike, can I ask auto upgrade to remove all these old parameters, these old underscores and events? I think we have some, they date back from the 9-2 days. But I, I started to discuss that internally and people were not convinced and not sure. I just want to go in and remove them just blindly. Oh, sure, remove underscore parameters, yes and underscores and events will be removed. By default, of course, they will be kept. So we don't touch them. We just give you a warning in the analyze run that you have underscores and events set and you may check them. But if you say, hey, I pull out the big sledgehammer, remove all of them, you can do that. Postpone the recompilation. That is also something which is in some cases quite useful. For instance, there are CPU architectures out there which give you a lot of virtual cores. So we had cases with uh, 64 virtual cores and then the recompilation hammers in with 128 parallel jobs, even though you may have only eight cores, eight real cores in the system. So you do a massive overload. And in such cases, it may be good to postpone the recompilation. So you use run utl underscore rp equals no, and then you postpone it, you recompile by yourself. You could also skip the time zone upgrade. We won't cover the time zone upgrade itself today in more detail, but you find already information on our blogs. If you wanna skip the time zone upgrade, then you say time zone underscore upg equals no. There could be several reasons for doing that. First of all, you may decide that a time zone upgrade is not useful in your environment. Maybe your database is just acting in Germany and has no data from outside of Germany and Germany follows the usual middle European or central European time. No reason for that. But you may be a telco operator, telco's billing system, and then it may be useful to adjust that. Another fact to skip the time zone upgrade could be that it, first of all, may take very long in some cases, and you would like to apply certain workarounds, or it could also be the case that you would like to downgrade afterwards. And time zone can't be downgraded. When you downgrade a database and you upgrade a time zone, then you have to make sure that the source home where you upgraded from has the same time zone file in place. 
So be aware of that. There are some reasons, or it could be simply that you want to save some upgrade time and skip it by yourself. Advanced options, and this is extremely powerful. You can pass on also cut CTL options. So cut CTL is the parallel upgrade underneath the covers and cut CTL options here are for instance, options to define the parallel degree and the parallel workers for a multi-tenant upgrade. Right now, only for CDBs, not for non-CDBs, this is coming later. So here with the minus N lowercase parameter, you decide the total number of parallel processes overall. The minimum is four, the maximum is unlimited. The default is at the moment the host's CPU count. We will change this to the CPU count of the database in the near future. And minus uppercase N, this is the number of parallel workers per PDB. The minimum is one, the maximum is eight, the default is two. Daniel will show you some cool numbers later on and some graphs, how you can adjust those and what's possible with these parameters in a real multi-tenant environment with many, many PDBs. Usually the default of two is the most efficient one. That's why we set that default. And then we show you also how you can monitor the upgrade with LSJ and status minus job. But auto upgrade writes also a state HTML file. And what you could do, and I like that a lot, is you can start a Python simple HTTP server in that directory, and it will display the output or the, the input actually, not the output of state HTML. You open just the browser, and you send it to localhost and the port you defined here. So in my example from the box, it would be 8888 and not 8000, state HTML. I would like to show you that. Let me show you a quick demo here. Auto upgrade one single command. So what we do here is we have an auto upgrade on a config file. I run the analyze before, now I use deploy. And with deploy, I upgrade all my databases. What databases do I upgrade here? You see, I have three databases, FTX, UPGR, and DB12. I can, of course, query and say, status minus chop 103. What is the FTX database doing? Okay, it has dictionary objects. But I find it much cooler to monitor everything automatically. So what I do here, I go to the logs directory. And in the logs directory, we have the CFG tool logs, auto upgrade auto. And in this one, you see the state HTML. So what I do here is I start a Python simple HTTP server that should be on all your Unix ports on the more modern ones. And I send it here to port 8080, whatever port you define. In my browser, localhost, colon 8080, state HTML. And now it displays this file. I don't have to refresh. It just refreshes automatically with every update in the file, the browser gets a refresh. So what we see here is the free databases. Uh, FTX has started the upgrade. UPTR is in prefix subs, DB12 is in the setup. The upgrades are a little bit deferred, so they don't hammer all at the same time. Now let's kick them off and let's see what happens. So now two, all three databases are in upgrade mode and don't worry, that the last one, the DB12, is a bit cut. As in a minute, the browser focuses better. Now it's focusing. So we see FTX 39%, UPGR, and it counts up. FTX 46, and so on. I don't have to do anything. This happens absolutely automatic. And if you have more databases, this is so useful because you don't have to type all these commands. You just monitor that web page. Now they're on the post fix-ups phase. And even when you plug in, it just goes on because I want to plug them in. They are all now in the non-CDB to PDB state, stopped, finished, and all are finished now, everything plugged in. Only one file, one simple web page. That's a super cool feature. 